on the morning prayer for August 8th, 2019. I'm so glad that you've joined me today. We're going to pray and worship. We'll do the readings from the Book of Common Prayer. If you have a prayer request, go to benwardmusic.com slash prayer request. We'd love to pray for you. You unravel me with a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance from my enemies Till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child of God Thank you, Lord, for this day. We give it to you, we honor you, and we bless you. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that they follow us all the days of our lives. And they follow us right here to this moment together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you with thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. I'm no longer a slave to fear Oh, I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave I am a child of God. Our first psalm for today is Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Psalm 85, you, Lord, showed favor to your land. 
You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord said. He promised peace to his people as faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Psalm 86 Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever You have chosen me Thank you, Lord. You have chosen me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you are slow to anger and abounding in love. Our Old Testament reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 11. In the spring, at the time when the kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rebath. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Iliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. 
Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David, saying, I am pregnant. So David sent this word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Joab was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the palace, and a gift from the king was sent after him. But Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master's servants, It did not go down to his house. David was told Uriah did not go home. So he asked Uriah, Haven't you just come from a military campaign? Why didn't you go home? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents, and my commander Joab and my lord's men are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and make love to my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to him, Stay here one more day, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. At David's invitation, he ate and drank with him, and David made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep on his mat among his master's servants. He did not go home. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In it, he wrote, Put Uriah out front where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Uriah at a place where he knew the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. Joab sent David a full account of the battle. He instructed the messenger, When you have finished giving the king this account of the battle, the king's anger may flare up, and he may ask you, Why did you get so close to the city to fight? Didn't you know they would shoot arrows from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, son of Jerub Besheth? Didn't a woman drop an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died in Thebes? Why did you get so close to the wall? If he asks you this, then say to him, Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. The messenger set out, and when he arrived, he told David everything Joab had sent him to say. The messenger said to David, The men overpowered us and came out against us in the open, but we drove them back to the entrance of the city gate. Then the archer shot arrows at your servants from the wall, and some of the king's men died. Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. David told the messenger, Say this to Joab, Don't let this upset you. The sword devours one as well as the other. Press the attack against the city and destroy it. Say this to encourage Joab. When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. And after the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. Our New Testament reading is Acts chapter 19. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick. And their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, In the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. 
When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. I'm no longer a slave to fear. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. Our gospel reading is Mark chapter 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white and whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, Why did the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then is it written that the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected? But I tell you, Elijah has come, and they have done to him everything they wished, just as it is written about him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen and amen. My mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Collect of the Day is Proper 13. It says, Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We love you, Jesus. We love you and we worship you, Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name. going to lead us in a time of guided prayer. I'll give prompts and I'll play. You just pray specifically for the situations for the people in your own life. Let's begin with our own hearts. Let's bring our joys, our thanksgivings, our celebrations, but also our worries and fears, anxieties, all of these things we lay at Jesus' feet, the things we don't understand. Bring him your own heart today. He loves you. bring our immediate families those closest to us before the Lord Let's pray for our extended families. Let's pray for our friends, acquaintances, co-workers.
pray for our enemies. Jesus commands us to pray for our enemies, to bless those who curse us. Anyone who set themselves up against you where there's conflict, pray for them. Pray for the blessing upon them, what you would want prayed for you. Pray for those who are afraid today, whether you think of uh, immigrants who maybe all of a sudden because of the shootings and things feel unwelcome or afraid to go to the store or take their children to school. The Lord says, perfect love casts out all fear. The love of God casts out all fear. It doesn't matter where you fall politically. Let's pray that his perfect love will cast out all fear that you would be near to the brokenhearted, which he is. Pray that they know that. Pray how we can be the hands and feet in our own lives of Jesus to those who are afraid and hurting. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child. I'm no longer a slave to fear. And I am a child of God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen and amen. Thank you for praying with me today. Let's go through your day in the power and the presence. In the peace of the Holy Spirit. Amen.